Today we will be ranking every cartoon that we have watched. The classic S, which is best, which makes sense because S is for Shannon. Then we have A, B, C, D, skip E because that's just as of tradition, F, and then void for shows we feel like we don't have enough of an opinion on or remember enough of. So it's not void isn't below F, but void is in... No comment. No comment. I do it. have a comment, though. What's your comment? If S is for Shannon that's at the top of the tier, then what the hell are you trying to say about B? Brian. Well, let's see. See, Shannon's the top, then A, which is good. And I feel like Brian for B isn't bad. That's a, you're in the top 50%. This almost feels worse than if I was at the bottom. I don't know if that makes sense. It feels more patronizing. I think what it is is that you're mediocre and you're having a hard time coming to terms with that. So we're starting off with Adventure Time. And where do you want to start the conversation on that? I think both of us are in the same boat. We're like, we've seen some episodes, like me, maybe a few more than you, but not by much. Um, it's mostly just the impression that I get. I think what this really boils down to, and maybe it's a good thing to get out of the way early here, is how we're going to differentiate between some of those mid-tier levels, right? Yeah. Because B is still technically... Mediocre. You know, mediocre, but like also, it, hey, <laughs> hey, I can't believe this. If you're going to rank everything in the top three, then what's the point? Yeah. So I'm thinking of looking at C as it should be, which is average. The average middle, like, to me, what I'm going to define C as is a show that I would not just sit through, but probably be fine with, right? Yeah. If it was on TV, I'd watch it. Maybe something I'd never seek out and actually watch myself, or even recommend something that, like, can be on that I'm just fine with. Yes. So, on that note, what I have seen of Adventure Time is very funny. Um, it's, you know, uh, I, I, I am going to have to out myself here, because I just realized in the midst of our conversation, I am not sure which one's Adventure Time and which one's the regular show. Okay, we're going to put this in void. We're, we're going to have to put that in void. That's fair. <laughs> you if were, I can't... You were starting a whole noble speech. And I was. You... I was ready to ramp up. Okay, Amphibia. I think I like Amphibia. And t disclaimer, neither of us have seen past the first season. We never really got past the episodic episodes, which I enjoyed. I think Brian, not so much. Right. We're starting to notice a theme with some of the shows we watch. Uh, Shannon is in some ways more patient than I am, or at the very least willing to continue watching things longer than I have. Um, I didn't necessarily decide to stop watching Amphibia. It kind of happened, and I haven't felt the need to go back. To me, this would be a definitional C. Yeah. But I'm starting to notice a pattern of also won't be an issue here, which is that we're going to have different ratings. Yes, I we mean, are. We we're going to have to debate. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> one photo, two opinions. Um, I am the one controlling the clicker, though. I think I'm with you in calling this C, because while I also know more about the finale, I think that you do, and I think what they did with its very intriguing and its unique take on cartoons... I also think if we pretty much watched most of the first season right. and we weren't really pushed to watch more, I don't think I can really at this point give it higher than a C. Got you. It's definitely like a C with upward mobility. Oh, absolutely. Um, as any job will tell you in the United States. Don't uh, worry. Uh, next we have Avatar. Um, I'm going to put this on the list. Put this on the table. S tier, then we'll say why. Yeah, go nuts. Because like... Not really, not really a it. surprise. Wait, eh. What the... She brags about controlling the clicker and then can't even put it in the right spot. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, I got it. It's there. Wait. That's some real S tier bullshit, is what I have to say. Oh, I have all the power. Yes. Um, Avatar. I think proof enough that it belongs in S tier is the fact that what 16, 17, 18, 17. Okay, I'm bad at math. 17 or 18 years after. Oh. Sorry, that just processed. Oh, no. The fact it still has such a grasp on society that we're all excited for Avatar Studios, that people are talking about it, that it's it was together. It's not perfect, but it also doesn't really have any glaring weak points. Mm -mm. The characters, right? Charming, lovable, phenomenal. Even the villains are, you know, written in great ways. Uh, the plot itself, like you said, was very tight-knit. Um, they had the plan start to finish, which I think is huge, and not a lot of people have that benefit. The world building is, like, you know, really impactful and kind of uh, unique in its own right. Because I think the structure of the show mirrors a lot of what we're seeing coming out today in most cartoons, but it was back before this was really a thing. And I like overarching plot. I know, we, I know this is a personalist, so I'm allowed to say that's what's making it specifically go into S tier. And I also feel like they touched on a lot of themes that cartoons were a bit afraid to touch on. Yeah, in 2006, they were out here saying, like, 
hey, maybe sometimes nationalism is propagandic and, yeah. you know, the citizens aren't recognizing some of these issues because it's from the ground up. And, yeah. like, you know, for a children's cartoon, that's pretty nuts. No, it's it really, really is. Good, but... All right, Ben 10, Brian. Ben Tennyson. Ben Tennyson. I think that's his name. Wait, does... Who voices Ben 10? Time to go on my favorite website, Behind the Voice Actors. She does this 30 times a day. Leave me alone. We'll be watching, like, a fluoride toothpaste commercial, and Shannon will be like, oh, wow, who voices the toothpaste? I need to know, because sometimes it sounds familiar. I mean, while you do, I can go ahead and absolve myself from this one. I can say with almost- 17 incarnations! Oh, wait, Yuri Lowenthal. Wait, no, I- Who is that? Wait, does ben no, no, no. 17 no. voice actors? No, 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 no. Yuri Lowenthal, this voice is- there. I know who this is. Wait, I need to- uh, no she, she's furiously scrolling through like the voice actor page because i know that name i mean like sasuke no yeah sasuke all right ben 10 being sasuke already makes me like him maybe more <laughs> <laughs> but are we gonna put it in void because yeah i i've never seen yeah. an episode of my entire life oh yeah okay well i would watch it before school sometimes and honestly the only thing i remember sticking out to me was i thought it was cool if they had like i think it was like a cousin dynamic which is like kind of reminds me of like Gravity Falls with like the sibling dynamic, which I feel like is interesting. Yeah. But I, I definitely don't remember enough to uh, place it upon our tears. I mean, there's also like apparently so many versions. Like there really are. I think like there's a bunch of different versions of Ben 10. And like all I'm thinking of is the original one. The real question is, are you starting with the original Ben 10 or Ben 10 Brotherhood? Like what's your, what's your suggested <laughs> watch list? No. Hit us in the comments. Let us know whether we should start with Ben 10. Or Ben 10 Brotherhood. I'm gonna kill you. Okay, Bob's Burgers. I think I might like the show more than you. Just from our I conversation. I like it. You do. Um, and, like, it's wholesome. It is. So rarely do you get that, like, adult comedy humor that, like, also tries to be spreading those good, positive, you know, morals at the end of the day. It's true. Right. I'm gonna have to great spot for it. It's not, like... B for Bob's, Bob's Burgers. burgers. <laughs> um, we almost had to at that point. Next, we have Camp Laszlo. I really don't know why I didn't just filter out the voice first, because I... Well, well, here's the thing. I think we have to touch on a couple important points here. Okay. Number one, Camp Laszlo, uh, canon bisexual main character, <laughs> which is huge. All right. So I, I, I missed... I said the wrong thing before. Leave me alone. <laughs> I forget what you were talking about. I Shannon know. was trying to, like... We were reading through the list of uh, different shows. Shannon was trying to mention that, like, I guess one of them had a canonized uh, bisexual main character. And I had just said that Camp Laszlo, and in my head I was like, that doesn't sound right. I said that it can't be. It didn't sound like something that anybody would comment on. <laughs> Laszlo is a bicon, Brian. What are you talking about? Sorry, yeah. So, I mean, listen, if you have Camp Laszlo with Disney's first gay character, <laughs> I feel like you can't just throw it into the void. I mean, that's homophobic. Oh, cancel me. All right, Chalk Zone. Rudy's got the chalk. I don't want to throw this into the void. No. Because I remember it fondly. It's also a really cool idea. Yeah. After seeing this, going into school, I'm like, drawing really cool things and erasing it thinking like oh it's going into the chalk zone it's gonna show up in the next episode how many chalk penises do you think there are floating <laughs> around in the chalk zone i you know those like s's that people used to make oh, in like yeah. the third grade i would do that as like the body of a penis <laughs> <laughs> that is my biggest contribution to art <laughs> in general i feel like where, where, where are you putting a placement here um it's tough because it's been so long, uh, so really we're kind of throwing science at the wall here and seeing what sticks. I would go ahead and probably give it the C. Okay, C for chalk. C for chalk. Kids Next Door. I think this is B. I'm willing to hear you out, but right now I'm going to put it up here and you can look at Ah, ah, you can look at it. Tell me what you're thinking. No, I, you said it, and in my head I was like, I have no argument nor would I want to disagree with that. It makes a lot of sense. What's cooler than erasing chalk? uh kids making these giant fortresses with like it, like the creativity in design here was one thing two nigel uno voiced by joseph joestar joseph joestar and i can never run here that you ruined no. it for me nigel uno you can take that joe sound and make him one of the canon joes I think. where's the second joe come from you need two we don't know his middle name you know nigel <laughs> joe uno nigel joe uno Here's the thing, though. Wouldn't number four be at your top now? Because it's a, a, a no, tiny, don't, it's a don't. tiny blonde guy with a, with a a Dutch haircut, and like that's like just so <laughs> everyone knows. Kink. Just so everybody knows, that's Shannon's kink now. Is just everyone who looks like Armin from Attack on Titan is just immediately uh, you can't the favorite. Keep, 
Because I know what you're doing right now. Yeah. You're not saying the words, but you're insulting my love for Kropika. I am. You're not allowed to do I that. I am doing it indirectly. It happened. The, the, the die is on the table. It's been cast. What is that? Oh. <laughs> Code Oko. <laughs> Where are we putting Code Lyoko? Um... I have a request. Can you try to find that one clip of her saying that thing? What if something has happened to Jeremy? And what if we don't manage to deactivate the tower in time? This is serious. Listen, one of us has to go back to reality and right away. We don't have much time. Right, I'll go. No, it's better if I go. I don't know how many life points I have left, Ulrich. And if I only have five or ten, I won't be of much use to you here. And also, I have a little matter to deal with that only I can settle. It's between me and myself. Um, it feels like it's sitting too high right now, being honest with you. <laughs> we also have to like, come to terms now, what about shows that are objectively bad, but we have a really, really fun time watching? To me, it always boils down to if the enjoyment's the same, I'm still going to put it up, because I'd be more no, willing no, to recommend no. it. Oh yeah, no, because if it comes down to, you have to think about how likely are you on the scale to sit down and put it on. And Code Lyoko, objectively animation terrible. Mm -hmm. The and like I know the whole voice thing is probably just dubbed it, but yeah. you can dub it better than whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, it was awful. Um, it feels insulting to put it on the same level with those other two shows that I do think are objectively much better. As far as how much I enjoyed it, though, I would keep it. I think that's a C tier because objectively it belongs lower. Enjoyment maybe a little higher, so balance that it with does. A. Okay, yeah. now it's C for Code Lyoko. C for Code Lyoko. Is this gonna keep happening? I hope so. Oh, because no, it's not. Courage, We're and we about can't to put. It. Yeah, we can't put courage in C. I want to start putting things at C and then move them up or down, just so we can look at the picture. Okay. Okay. So courage. That's a cute picture. What are your feelings? My feelings are A. Me this too. Just to start. Um. Even for its time, when things were weird, right? We've been talking about those old cartoon shows. There was like a lot of imagination, kind of like tied into that stuff. I'm not saying it isn't now. Yeah. There's a lot of random, kind of like vibrant. Uh, expression going on in these shows. Courage still was leaps and bounds above some of the other ones for me. It was this weird blend of like absurdism and horror and like wholesomeness because like Courage and Muriel were just oh it was cute it was the cutest. Um, but like I just love Courage. It was one of those like weirdly episodic shows that I felt very strong ties to the main character for. A for Courage. A for Courage. And you were gonna say that's why I said it first. Thank you. Haha, <laughs> that's my, no, my idea. As long as it gets set. Okay, next we have Danny Phantom. Right, we'll we kind of got it at least a little bit. D for Danny. Danny. He was oh, just oh. 14, but his parents built a very strange machine. It was designed to view a world unseen. He's don't, 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 what is it? Don't kill the cringe. Kill, kill the, the part that cringes. cringes. There you go. Um, I'm going to start. You're allowed to move it. Yeah. Number one, Sam was an early goth girlfriend crush. Yes. Um, hands down. Uh, Box goes very funny. Also, like other things, the Ember song. Everyone remembers the oh, Ember I, song. Yeah, I actually do. Um, there's, like, a lot of that show that stuck with me for having watched it only as, like, a pretty young kid. Um, and even beyond that, like, I'm pretty sure it actually ended up leading into a bit of an overarching plot. Oh. Or at least, like, once in a while, I think they tied in some, like, bigger, you know, plot arcs in there. I want to give it the benefit of the doubt and at least leave it at the C. Okay. I don't, I wouldn't say that I would dissuade anyone from watching it, which is why I wouldn't put it down in the yeah. tier. No, it's fair, because it, it's very medium. And I do remember watching a few episodes, like, a year or two ago, and, like... I remember thinking, okay, it's like lots of funny parts. I think the problem is that it still delivered its lines in a very like, we're pausing so you can laugh. And that can kind of get under my skin after a while. Oh, for sure. It's like the laugh track without the laugh track. Yeah. yeah. Which is better than a laugh track with laugh track. Amen. So, all right. Next we have Dexter's Laboratory. This was mom's jam. I would even say it has some heart and some funny, like there's, I still remember jokes from Dexter's Lab that make me laugh. To this day, you know what I mean? Not just like. Then are we feeling B? I am good with B. That feels right. Yeah, there's a lot of love in my heart for Dexter's lab. That feels right. I feel like looking at Amphibia, I know it's in the wrong spot. I know it should be higher. I just don't feel confident putting it anywhere higher now, but that's just that's just how it be. Let's see what's right. next. Next we have Dragon Prince. <sighs> I gravitated more towards your feelings about this as time has gone on, so I'm gonna let you go first. In my head, this is B. I don't think it flowed as nicely or was as tight as perhaps something I would put in Ayers S. I agree. I think it's a good way to put it. I definitely had a big honeymoon phase. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it went away, the honeymoon honeymoon phase that it is. And like, you know, I think that's important to take into consideration. The lasting, right, effect of a show. I'm gonna agree. Yeah. B's good. B. B for Bragon Prince. Ha, <laughs> got him. Alright, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This is tough. 
This actually is because it's like, I it's, don't. It's not C. I just can't think of it's higher or lower. I just know it's not C. It's right. It's, there are parts of it that were really kind of like just hideous. And, it was ugly. It, it was an ugly show with ugly noises and <laughs> just. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. It was funny. I don't think if I sat down though and I could pick out of any of these shows, I feel like that might be like one of the last ones I would pick. So like I actually have to sit through and watch. I think I could watch one episode and stop, which I don't think is a good sign. It's gonna break my heart, but I think you can do what you're gonna do. It's I'm it, sorry. It's great in memory and to quote lines from, but like not to actually go back to and revisit. Okay, Brian, you're gonna hate me. What's next? Okay. I do hate you actually. <laughs> I see it. I see it peeking out from the bottom of your screen and I'm mad. I have here's the thing, as with most people. I watched My Little Pony, ironically, with a friend, and then it spiraled, and now I own a t-shirt, and then I made Brian watch it for another video we're going to be doing one day, and, yeah. um... She also gives me My Little Pony things, so there's a Fluttershy by my computer. No, because the grocery store... <laughs> no, hear me out. The grocery store has these little things with Hershey Kisses, and they were on sale one day, and you get a free pony in them, and you were supposed to collect them all. And I, I fell into exactly what they wanted me to do, and I had all of them except for, like, Applejack, who's my favorite. So I kept buying them and buying them. And I, at this point, now have, like, 30 of these little ponies, and none of them are Applejack. Now that I've been outed as having watched this piece, Shannon made me sit through at least three episodes of each one. I will say I definitely preferred this version, I think, to the original. It's a little meme -ier, oddly little enough. Meme Oddly enough. Also, I think this is what introduces lore. And once you really sit and marinate with the fact My Little Pony has an excessive amount of lore, it's pretty funny. When any show has lore, I'm more inclined to enjoy that show. Yes. Because you want to learn more about the lore. Yeah. For sure. So what tier are we thinking? Like, we watched those three episodes. And, like, I did enjoy them. Yeah. Like, I'll say it. I'll, I'll come out here on YouTube and out myself. Like, yeah. they were good. They were good. Um, you know, it was, like, pretty standard cartoon stuff. I would be caught between probably B and C. Me too. Because I don't know if I'd ever actually want to go and, like, finish watching it. But also, if you were, like, Brian, if we were going to go finish watching this, I would say, yeah, sure. Uh, it's also really wholesome. I mean, like, it's, like, Friendship is Magic is in the title of what, like, My Little Pony is. I, too, am with you, was, like, if there was a C plus tier. But I don't want to start getting into all that. We need to it's sit here inside. I guess you should compare it side by side to some yeah. of our guys existent right now. You know? Okay, I'm gonna say, I think I'd be. Ugh, I, f I feel like I'm really shitting on Amphibia. I know Amphibia is good, but if I were to sit here and decide today if I wanted to throw on an episode of Equestria Girls or Amphibia. All right. <laughs> do it. Listen, do what you're gonna do. So that brings us to uh, Fairly Odd Parents, oh. which are this we... is unique. Yeah, I mean, what are we taking into account here? What it is today or what it was when we knew and loved it? Ever since you said that thing about how every single sentence, every single word is accompanied by, like, background music, like, with what they're saying, I've been thinking about how, like, actually amazing that is. Does that make it go up a tier? I don't know. Some orchestra, or at least small sect of one, was sitting there, like, listening or watching this episode and, like, playing along in theory. You know what I mean? Like, they, yeah. they, they matched their score perfectly, which is nuts. Like you said, like, that's just... But then we also, Timmy's like such a basic bitch. Like Tara Strong, I love you. Timmy's a basic bitch. Um, it was also from like a different era though. It was. It was like cartoons weren't sitting here coming out with these avatar, like, you know, <laughs> nuanced themes and like, you know, redemption arcs. Unless Remy Bucks of Plenty got a redemption arc. I think he did it. No, yeah, because. They, they undid it though, didn't they? They undid it. Because he yeah. ended up like learning that his parents were better than money, but then he also got more money because they, they like found oil, oil or something. Yeah, they went to the <laughs> island where they were banished and he was happy, but then they found oil. And, and then he was, was unhappy and he's like, I need to take this out on Timmy. I would put it up. Me? Yeah, and then just ignore the canon after they added like four more characters. Now there's two. Right. Family Guy. Um, I'm gonna say F is for yeah, Family Guy. F is for Family Guy. It was so easy. Wow. Wow. Anyway, Foster's home. No, it's not getting out. No, no, no. <laughs> um, Foster's home. I feel like it was wholesome. It had a surprising amount of lore. The animation was fun. The concept was great. It was a really good show. Like, I know I keep saying that. And this is the problem. Okay, I'm, I'm also moving a question girls down to say. I've decided. All right. I would, that feels right. I enjoyed... Foster's home for different reasons than the Fairly Odd Parents, which we just discussed. It was yeah. probably, like, there was probably less, like, ridiculous humor that made me, like, you know, laugh all the time. But at the same time, 
there was more wholesomeness, I think. Yeah. At the end of the day. I think it kind of balances out. I would put it around B, but I'd be willing to, like, you know. No, I think yeah. you're right, because I, I do think it's, like, very much on par with everything else there. That feels right. Yeah. Futurama. I'm going to leave this one up to you. I haven't seen nearly as much as you have. Should we avoid it if you haven't seen it? I don't want Well, no, because I have seen it. Yeah. I've seen episodes. I, like... I think it's hard to say, because that adult humor, like, it's definitely not in the same vein of a lot of the other ones we've watched. It's a product of its time, but it does that thing where it blends, like, you know, raunchy humor and stuff with, like, some moments of, like, oh, like, that's really cute and wholesome. And, like, yeah. You know, there's a couple endings of, the, the ending of the show is brutal. It's actually pretty, like... Wait, uh, I don't know. What if one day I decide I want to watch it? Okay, so where do you think? It's just got this, like, same dry humor as Bob's Burgers, but, like, this is, like, the Naruto to me, right? Okay. There's a lot to say that's probably not great about it, but there's also a lot that, like, stuck with me through the years. No, I'll... How about B for now? He's good. Because A... Yeah. I, I, I don't have the say, and I want to have say when it comes to A. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, let's... Who knows what really <laughs> happens when a video game starts to glitch? All right. Is that what you're thinking? I just talked a lot about Futurama, so you go nuts. It's all you. Well, we both watched, I think, both of the two seasons of this. I threw it on really thinking we would only get, because this was at the point where we were struggling to find shows that were like filling the void, because this might have been like, I think, post Shira or something. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, I was blown away with what it was. So I didn't think it was gonna be that good. I thought, one, great friendship moments between the two of the main characters, funny jokes that seemed to always land, and then surprisingly wholesome moments like Mitch lives in my head rent free it's really mitch tex isn't it mitch tex and they make that pu the pun is so good they make it three times and think we forget they make it so then they make it again like it's mitch tex oh and i'm like yo no it, that's good it's still funny Mitch tex is so enjoyable just to see yeah and like I don't, i'm not even like a gamer girl like you're a gamer girl so you like probably get more of what they're like the jokes they were making i feel like they're pretty accessible that's the thing too yeah. like if, if i who's like extent of video games is like Stardew Valley and Minecraft <laughs> and Pokemon Snap. If I can enjoy Three it. Three ringers, though. <laughs> well, I have great game. taste. You do. So, yeah. I think that feels right. Just feel right. Like. Something feel right. Okay. This is another one where I feel like if Futurama was your thing, Gravity Falls, I guess, is more of yeah. Shannon's vibe. For sure. Um, I like its balance of episodic and overarching. I think the humor in it, very funny. That being said... I don't think it would be where glitch text and courage are. Like, are. I'm going to... What What are you thinking? Is I think that, that makes okay? sense. Yeah. Yeah. The B feeder is going to fill up because it's a great spot to put shows that you do like, but that... It's you... not, like, so out there. Right. I'm not obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm someone who, if I see a clip of something, I'll watch it. So I've seen things that come after what I've seen. I've seen things before. I kind of know how it right. ends. Right. But overall, I feel confident with that. Great Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I really loved this show when I was younger. I have seen episodes since, and, like... What? It's a little much. It was just, like, a little bit too much of that, like, early scene, kind of, like, random for random sake without any of, like, the kind Invader of... Invader Sim. Yeah, the, I feel like Invader Sim. Um, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's, like, it's very just kind of loud. And, like, that's what tried to, you know... Which, like, we're saying this is, like, a 23 and a 20... Should I hold on? Oh, wait, wait, no. Wait. She'll do it. I believe in you. I am going to have to no, figure it out, wait, though. 26. Yes. Yeah, I did the math. Wait, am I 26? As, yeah, it's my birthday pass. Brian. Yeah, I had to remember. You should know how old you are. After oh, you said God. it, I was like, that sounds wrong. And then I was like, wait, I'm old. Okay, as a 23 to 26-year-old, yeah. it's fair that we put it lower. However, I understand this wasn't made for me at the stage yeah. I am now. Yeah. I'm thinking D. Yeah. I yeah. think for the same reason. I think Ed, Ed, and Eddie was just a little loud for me now. Right, right. Because I'm old. All right, Gumball. Love Gumball. I love Gumball. Everyone's like, oh, it's just so much, like, meta commentary. Yes, it's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, it's, yeah. That show manages to get laughs out of me much more effectively yeah. than, like, many of these other... Like, I could probably quote you, like, probably, like, two dozen, three dozen, like, different, like, gumball moments. Uh, having seen very few episodes of the show, yeah. I think, overall. Oh, yeah. Um, I would be willing to consider this on the A tier. Me, too. I'm so glad you said that, because I was, yeah. like, gonna have to fight you. The art style is so weird. Oh! They blend, like, all those different kind of, like styles together and that was like, the first time i'm sure it's like happened before that's the first time i saw it and like right. it's so unique because one of the characters is literally an upside down chin 
That's so yeah. funny. It is. It is really like just kind of like, I don't know, vibrant. I'm yeah. Thinking. No, it's it's a good time. My gym pack. Can you put this in void? I, they're in this, I remember what the characters look like. Um, I remember. Th- I don't remember. I remember them, and I remember like a bird. I don't remember how it made me feel. Was there a snake? Probably. Okay. Ra- I could just name animals, and they were probably <laughs> in the show. He Man from the eighties, Masters of the Universe. Oh. Nothing compared to the live action movie with Courtney Cox. It wasn't, but at the same time, we watched it, and like it was kind of fun. I wasn't gonna say good. I feel like good is the wrong word. It's ironic. I enjoy yeah. it for not the reasons they want me to. Oh, for sure. Like at the end of the episode when someone comes on the screen and tells you what you learned. Oh, I yeah. like, I lose my marbles. Like, He's like remember, don't let strangers into your home. And I'm like, I don't know, man. It was like a wolf man and a magic witch. That's crazy. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a stretch. They're like, oh we need to tie it. We need to tie yeah. to the lesson. What are your thoughts? <sighs> you'll you'll kind of caught up about it. Because the problem is like it's one of those things where I would very much enjoy watching, like, two episodes of it, and then it'd be like, alright, I have enough for, like, a week. C-tier, probably, yeah. right? Like, it's not, it can't be on the Bs. No. Brian, I'm thinking, no. What? No. Are you mean to mean to Amphibia? Are you, are you, like, looping back to the Amphibia thing still? Because the problem is, I don't know, it's, like, not, we've seen too much of it for it to be void. Right. But I know we didn't see... Like, even though we, I, I, I at least know of the scenes that are to come, right. I haven't seen them. You haven't seen them. <sighs> I'm leaving it at C, but I feel bad about it. Hey, Arnold. Arnold. Hey, Arnold. Mm, it has a 90s charm to it. Was it the 90s? It, it has the 90s charm to it. I, I think, think it was, it was the late 90s. 90s. Yeah. yeah, like early 1000s. It was like one of those earlier, it was one of the earlier episodic shows, I think, that focused more on like, not like on heavier themes, I mean, it was Hey Arnold, but yeah. like, there were like certain episodes where I was like, hey, you know, here's someone who's like living an alternate lifestyle, like, you know, the Pigeon Man, I don't know if you remember Pigeon Oh, Man. I remember the Pigeon Man. Yeah. And it was like, you know, hey, like, you know, even the kids are treating him cruelly, and like, you know, at the end of the day, like, he's gonna be moving on. Like, he fly. I don't know if you remember. He oh, I, he, he literally flies away with pigeons. Yeah. pigeons. I remember that. And there was like stuff like that, that just made it like a little bit weird, but like, also like a little bit heavier, like. I don't know. Yeah. I, I liked Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. Yeah. I'm fine with the rubber one of it. I, I said my piece. So. I think that feels right for now. I think that feels right. Okay, for now, Hilda. Um, I have an opinion. Okay. I am both glad they made a second season. I watched and thoroughly enjoyed it. But I also feel like I would have put it higher had it stuck to like the shorter one season length. You also were the only one of two of us who did watch that second season. So you, I'm going to take your word for it more than I would my own. I very much enjoyed the season we watched. Uh, it was, the second season was good. It just felt like more of the same potatoes. Right. Art style, gorgeous. Yeah. The world, like the world itself. Charming. Ch- very charming. Wood, the woods, wood guy. Yeah, wood, I, I love the wood, wood guy. man. I don't remember his name. Wood dude. Wood dude. Woodsley. Woodsley. That sounds good. Barker. Barker. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, uh branch never mind um oh. ooh, no ooh. we're gonna ignore that Ouch. leave me alone wow it feels speak your truth it's b or c i'm really struggling to fig- figure out i i think comparing it maybe to some of the other ones here mm-hmm. right like you know chalk zone or like for it was i think i probably enjoyed the experience a little bit more than no that. i think you're right yeah i think what i'm coming back to is i feel like foster's home should be c Oh, really? I've, I keep looking at it. It's giving me pause. So why Foster's Home more than some of these other shows that are out there? I, I'm not arguing against you. I'm just curious. I just want to know the... Uh... With all of these other shows, I think I could watch multiple episodes in a row. Whereas with Foster's Home, I think it'd be like I'd watch three and then be like, I need to just switch to a different show for a while. Gotcha. And I think that's how I'm really defining C. Is, is a, a microdosing. Microdosing the show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bump it down. All right. Ooh. Okay, here's the thing. I'm not even going to listen to you. This is going straight up to S. And then you can you can tell me why you think that's wrong There's with you. There's some glare on your screen, so I can't say. Oh, that's Infinity Train. You definitely like Infinity Train more than I do. As a fact. It, it's been that way since season one. And that's fine. I think it's an A-tier show to me. I... Fuck you. Like, when I think of Avatar and everything that makes it good, like, to me, they're not in the same realm. Like, that's like a very easy way to kind of quantify that. Fuck I'm sorry. You. Fuck just... you. You're it. No, you're you're telling me, no, man, dude, no, no. The humor's phenomenal. The concept's great. 
season two was one of the best, like, enclosed seasons. The concept of also changing the protagonist each season. There's a lot that's amazing there. Watching Avatar makes me cry, Shannon, at different points. Like, think about it. Think about oh, it. did you not cry during Infinity Train? I mean, like, I definitely once was like, wow, that's really fucked up when, can I say spoilers? Oh, when, when, uh, when, when, when he, Lake was like... <laughs> oh, no, no, that was badass. Oh. No, when he killed Tuba. <laughs> oh, when, Tuba. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, like, killing Tuba was a moment where I was like, wow, this is, like, profound. This show is not afraid to pull punches, which is why it's A tier. But, like, when I watch Avatar, it is... I'll put it in A. I just want everyone to know. Wait, wait, wait. I think it belongs in S. If you're channel man, put it in S. No, no, no. no, no. Put it in S, because then I'm going to do this later for another show, probably. And I'm I not. That, I'm not putting Pacific Rim in S. I want that. I won't. I won't put Pacific Rim in S. I wouldn't. But but put it back up in S. Okay. He, I'm yeah. I'm worried about what you're going to put. Okay. I don't know. I'm just, I don't even know. I'm just thinking <laughs> that it might happen. Invader Zim. Um. Same with like Billy and Mandy. Yeah. Me, like it. It's ob- I know it's objectively good, but because this is a personal list where we're putting our opinions, yeah. I I think I- it's my opinion. It's my opinion, and I remember yeah. watching the movie and getting a little of the headache. Not to be a bitch, a little too much. It's a bit okay. Jimmy <laughs> Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. Oh, did I tell you? Um, we watched um uh, the movie recently, the first movie. Oh God. Where they go into space, fight the egg monster. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy oh Trump no, was, it fell into D. D. Dude, it was doomed. It was D for doomed from the start because they used that art style that was like, oh god, it was too soon. It wasn't like Ruby where it was like really ugly, but like you can kind of get by. It was like too much. Oh, yeah. You know, he sucks. He's just an ugly he? character. Like Jimmy, he's just kind of like I don't remember that much. I remember, well, I like I remember him being pretentious, but I thought that was like a personal thing. I don't know if that was like everyone. No, no, it was. Like, like have you ever seen like the one joke where like it's like the guy from Mc. We make thankies from McSpankies. And like he kept saying the salt thing. Wait, yeah. He kept so saying, oh, here's your, your sodium, sodium chloride. chloride. And like that's the whole thing. Is like Jimmy's just like he's just like a little pompous ass. He's too much, too much, man. He's proof that sometimes bullying third graders is okay. <laughs> also, his head looks like the poop emoji. Oh my god. And he's not commenting on that. No, it's you true. Okay. Kipo, I tell me how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think it's as high as after Infinity Train. Both have this amazing world building. That's to me the main draw of the show. Yeah. More than anything else. Because the characters are great. Yeah. Right? The 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 writing and the plot is really good. It's really mostly a conceptual thing that draws me to the shows. That I think is like a super neat idea. Um that's executed super well. They're both really colorful and like stylized in their own way. Um but, like at the end of the day, the show like does that really well and then stops. You know what I mean? Art style? Oh, Kimo great. really is just Music wise, if we ever do a separate like music ranking, it's yeah. up there. It, is. it it was great. It Dave. Oh my god, it's fun. He's on my phone case. Okay, Legend of Korra. What do we think about that? I have changed my opinion about the show so much. I wish that they didn't have so many villains who were right. Yeah. <laughs> who were Which... just objectively kind of like in the right for like certain feelings they had. I think she was well written because yeah. as a teenager with all this like weight on your shoulders, who's always been kept in one place for your whole life, going out into the world, I'd probably also listen to people telling me things and be like, yep, this is right. But I also feel like it went beyond just her having that opinion into the show pushing that right. thought. And I also think it was weird that her and Sami were fueling a war so Sami could make money in her giant corporation. Yeah. Kind of weird. It's like funny like how, I think it's a great case study between Avatar and Korra. Yeah. Avatar covered a lot of like heavy stuff. And yeah. like things that like relate to the real world, right? They were talking about like, hey, imperialism is bad, right? War in general is kind of not a great thing. You should never really like, you know, be super hyped about it. Like redemption and like challenging your own trauma and like familial like you know issues there was like a lot tied in there that just was like really good but i think they stayed how do i put this they kept those concepts easy enough to talk about right the bad things were things that you know we should agree on our bad right again imperialism right there's like the familial abuse and trauma things you know like that but then Cora gets into this whole like what if we like get what if we what if we act like we got like one business and like one political science major from college and had them write these episodes together you know what I mean? Like, it gets, like, too weirdly specific about certain politics and things where it then goes beyond these very easy and, like, I think, things that should be talked about um, and you even, like, a little more complexly into this whole concept of, like, this villain is someone who says that there is systemic 
differences that are affecting people without, you know, bending in our society, but he's the bad guy. And we're going to show you that by making him just this hammed up villain who trolls his mustache. Like what bothers me is that they called the villains equalists yeah, and like, like, didn't, didn't look at that and think, Hmm. You no, know, we've really been shitting on the show more. more <laughs> than I think other shows that are going to be much lower on the tier list. Let's see some good things. Maybe. Yeah. Well, oh, obviously the art style and animation, they honed into that avatar thing even maybe better. It is gorgeous. There's a little bit too much CGI at times, but like that's like yeah. any show is gonna have that for cutting budget costs. I think the music is better than oh, the, original. the score. The violin like ending oh, is gorgeous. Yes, yeah, it truly gives you chills. It does. And there's like writing in there, especially with again the villains. It's funny because like at the end they kind of made good points and like they hyper villainize them in yeah. weird ways to like make it bad. But I loved um some of the guys in there and it's like yeah oh Zahir I think was his name Zahir oh, he was great I. To hear is so sexy. That scene in the first season on the boat where um I don't remember his actual name, but Amon was like, Yeah, that was Yeah, the fact that they got away with some of the stuff that they did, they definitely tackled some of the old stuff in like a really cool way where I said, Oh, like I could have kind of vibed with this had like it been more consistent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Um B? B's good. You definitely did watch a few episodes. I don't know if you remember. I remember liking Ken as like a the, the, oh, side, also the, the side piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I just remember him making like things about tetanus. I don't remember. I just remember yeah. being jokes about tetanus. That was funny. Also, the one girl who was like the quote unquote villain is proof that I will stand any bitch if they're bitchy enough. Right. I love bitches. I right. love bitch characters. You're um, into it. Also, they had the character who was like a doll from the 50s who they tried to, they're like oh like join us in the modern world and they're like at one point like do you want a peanut butter and jelly on like whole wheat she's like you know i don't eat spicy food i lost my shit uh, uh i think c yeah because it's funny but I, I don't think it's like you watch a few episodes for yeah. the meme and then you and then you're done yeah uh, miraculous simply the best okay did you watch any of this Two episodes, I think. Okay. I watched a very decent chunk of these episodes back in its height of hype. Um, it has a cool concept. It's not that enjoyable. None of the characters are that likable. I didn't really care for either of the two main characters. Right. Um, I don't think I cared for anyone. If you're going to do a rinse, wash, repeat cycle, the moment-to-moment -moment characterization and writing has to really get you. Purge the character. Yeah. Yeah. Every episode is going to be the exact same kind of setup, punchline, you know, hook, line, sinker. But the show's so colorful and enjoyable and funny and good that, like, it kind of makes up for that. It does. And, like... Or you're saying this does not? Uh, because I don't think it's F. It's not Family it's not, Guy. If it's, not, it's not Family Guy. It has a good It has a good opening. And also, do you remember, it's a magic girl anime. Do you remember yeah. when... I'm going to, like, oust my own personal information right now a little bit. Do it. I went on, like, a date with that person one time, pre-COVID. And I didn't, we didn't know much about each other. And we were talking, and, like, I found out that she wrote fan fiction for an old show and they, in my head at the time i was like i'm not gonna pressure if she's gonna talk about it but i do kind of want to know what show it was and so i was like oh like I, you know i watched like anime and cartoon and stuff like what do you buy it was miraculous ladybug like years later she's like i haven't watched it in years i just like somehow will write fan fiction for it i and worked I like, with someone who told me she used to get paid to write naruto and sasuke fucking oh at least you're making a dollar she like, said she yeah. never watched an episode but she knew it sold so she would write a bunch of like anime guys fucking and then people would pay her for it wow that was a fun fact all right now we're going to the other my little pony which i think belongs on i'm just gonna say the other the my little pony series are very similar they're very similar like i definitely preferred the one over the other but like i don't know if it's enough to care yeah. no I know, it, it's a fraction better yeah, yeah like it's definitely not enough for one to go higher than the other um they belong c for me eh uh, uh what how do i scroll up yeah <laughs> thank you for teaching me how to use a computer yeah, yeah. this i'm not gonna yeah no i it... think we both agree oh the wow. way they wow. weave music into the story the mm. art style the way the plot twists are so shocking but they're not like out of nowhere it all makes sense it all builds up to it and then it stops and, and it stops. stops it i have so many feelings about the show that are so hard to talk about it is the only show I know that's like it, if that makes sense. Like, there's shows that are similar. Like, there, there are other shows that, like, share maybe similar threads, but, like, it's the only show that comes together in the exact way that it does. It is charming. It is adventurous. It's, you know, tight-knit. Like, I'm doing a single part of the series where I feel like I'm not enjoying myself. Oh, yeah, and I respect when shows know to end. Yeah. 
I've never seen Pacific Rim, the show. I lied. S tier baby. No, I'm no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> fucking so I told Shannon I was going to try to. I'll, I'll very briefly describe this. I don't want to spoil it because I do want her to watch it. But to do that, she first has to watch the actual Pacific Rim movie. Um, what are you doing later? <laughs> um, all right. Pacific Rim, the black really surprised me because like I'm one of those people who loves the movie. And I feel like a lot of times you'll get that effect of like, well, if it's not like the movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or whatever. And like, I'll say, I'll be honest, like the show definitely undoes, I think, a lot of stuff the movie worked towards. And like, that's fine. You know, yeah. it's a show. I'm watching it to have a good time. It doesn't have to be Pacific Rim, the movie. Um, art style is nothing to write home about. Neither are the action sequences. It is much darker than you'd expect it to be. Like, I watched it in my head. I wasn't expecting them to do some, like, gruesome or somewhat, like, shocking things. And they kind of do. Hmm. Um, the characterization, as time has gone on, has been getting better uh, throughout the show. Um, there's a few characters who came in who weren't part of the main duo, the brother and sister. Also, the robot AI system is one of the characters. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like one of those, like, sarcastic robot. Like, Wait, no, I like that. Yeah, you know, they have, um, he's not blonde, but they have, like, a little Stop. Twinkie boy. Who, listen, I'm just letting you Stop know. Me. I'm just letting you know. That there is a small child in it who I feel like is going to be one of your favorite characters because I know who you are as a person. Not every skinny blonde boy with a bull haircut is a good bitch. Yeah, but like, they might not be. You still like them. That's your business. Anyway. All to, of... me, <laughs> <agapes. laughs> to me, agape is good Okay, here's the thing is that Yuri was perfect. I can agree with you on that. Um, you see a small angry Russian boy on ice skates. <laughs> what more can you want? What more do you want? Well? I think Pacific Rim the Black had a lot of potential. They jumped the shark a little bit in the last episode of the season, but like overall, I think solid B with upward mobility would be what I would put it at. I'll trust you. Wait, eh. Yeah. Okay. Next. Powerpuff Girls. This is another one where very funny. Mm-hmm. I liked the concept. Mm-hmm. It was very simple. Yep. It was also really wholesome ahead of its time. I think that the professor is a great example of like what is it called? positive, um, like like kind of like countering that toxic masculine yeah. you know, father role. Really, yeah, and no, I agree. You know, basing it off solely my memory of like who the three Powerpuff Girls were: Tara Strong, I love you. Uh-huh. Um, like the more I'm looking at these, the more like I want to move down because I feel like you want to make some space. I don't know. Not making space, more like I'm feeling bitchier now than I was like 20 minutes ago. Like you ago. warmed up and you're like willing to be mean about it. I'm willing to be mean because now I'm like looking at chalks and I'm thinking that flaws in day. I guess. Well, okay. So what is the, the premise we're saying is move some of the stuff from the C tier out of the C tier. Because even though we have fond memories, we probably wouldn't watch it all again. No. Yeah. All right. All right. Recess. A bop. Okay. I'm willing to put that up in Air Bay. What do you think, him? What's in Let me see here. This is where it gets tough. It see. is. Oh, yeah, look, it gives you a second row. We don't even have to oh, worry. Oh, cool, cool. We'll leave it here for now, but you can think about whether or not you want to move yeah. it up. I don't like what are you feeling on recess. I am thinking about the fact I do like the idea that all different types of people can come together and be, like, yeah. in a squad. Because, I, I mean, we all know who Best Girl is here. Was her name Spinelli? Spinelli? Yeah. yeah. Wait, do you remember the episode where she re- they realized her real name's, like, Ashley, Ashley? And she joins the Ashleys? Yes. Which, like, they had a group called the Ashleys. That's great. <laughs> it's like the Heathers, but yes. not. I think Barbara Dunkelman cosplayed. Oh, did she really? Yeah, it looks really good. That's funny. Um, But, yeah. Yeah, there were some good episodes in that. Um, B's probably a safe yeah. one, right? Because, like, maybe it's an A, but, like, we don't know enough about it to back that up. Yeah. Like, no, that feels right. That feels right for now. Regular show. That's more you. I I feel like if we, we voided a match time, we should void this. Like, That's just right. how it is. Which is like, like, it's probably really good. I've heard great things. I just haven't seen enough. The one thing regular show gave to me and Matt is that we watched like two episodes and that was like five years ago. And to this day, we'll still go coffee whenever we want to drink any coffee. So oh, I hate that. All right. Rick and Morty. This is a you responsibility because <sighs> I have not seen nearly as much of you as you. Which is like, it becomes this big thing, right? There's people who are obsessed with it and say it's the next thing, right? It's the best thing since sliced bread. There's people who are like, oh, I've seen the parts of the community I don't like, and therefore I hate it and it's bad. To me, it's a show that's pretty funny. Are we a Rick and Morty centrist? I'm a Rick and Morty centrist. It is a show that I think is pretty humorous. And it's there are problems, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's any adult humor show, like right? We, we slam Family Guy right into the F for some of those reasons that are yeah. like, you know. I think there's nothing redeeming about Family Guy. No, there's not. Um, it's just mostly bad. Rick and Morty is a funny show. 
to, I have been keeping up, and like to me, it's like if you're looking at just like the I throw it on, I have some laughs, right? It's not perfect, but like I have a good time with it. It's pretty high for me. It's like to me, it's like a Bob's Burger similar thing. Yeah, not for the wholesomeness reasons, obviously. Um, so are you thinking B? I would put it in the B. Okay, no, that sounds good. Rocket power. Where do you feel that belongs? D. D. You think or C? I don't know. What, B. If it's definitely one of these three, I just don't. I think you remember more than me because you were, I think. More into I, I would leave it more in the middle. See, um, because I think okay, I was, like you could probably watch some episodes and have like an alright time. Yeah, but like that's probably it, you know. Um, Rugrats. I tried rewatching a few things recently. Yeah. D. Yeah, it's kind of ugly. It's and I respect it for what it is. Yeah. Everyone's doing a baby voice though. It's like it's a lot. Oh, you... I saw it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is uh, this belongs to me both in S and F. Yeah, it's, and no, <laughs> the more I watch it, the more I Brian love the show, but also the more I understand it's kind of bad, right? Like Ruby, we have such a unique relationship because it is objectively one of our favorite shows. I talk about it all the time. Hands down, nothing about it is mediocre. It's just really bad and really good. It all makes me feel very strongly. Yes. I don't think I'd put it in S. No, I would God. put it in A. I'd put it in A with the knowledge that it doesn't belong there. It doesn't. It doesn't. Is it, but this is our list. It's our There's list. Else wants to go and make yeah, it. Yeah, be my guest. Fucking A, bitch. Yeah. I'm ashamed to have it in A, but A stands for ashamed, and yeah. that checks out. Yeah. Samurai Jack. I yelled at you a little bit before we started this yeah. episode about Samurai Jack. And it wasn't I, you. I was just mad at everybody else. I don't understand. It's a genius. Here's the thing. I, I think say it was genius. I know. I'm making fun of you oh, for okay. sucking. No, that's fair. I deserve it. Um, B? Me? I don't know. Well, yeah. you've been seeing it, right? It's like... I've, I've seen it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, when I was younger, I watched oh, it a lot. Okay. The problem is I think you watched it more recently. Yeah, so. I did some rewatching. It is a very slow show. And, like, much as I will make fun of things and make meme about it, like, it is a very slow show. Yeah. So if you're an impatient person or if, like, you're sitting down to watch something for, like, like engagement, like you have to be ready to sit on an episode and have like two things happen. Mystery Incorporated is the one where Fred is like sexually attracted to like the mechanisms and traps he sets up to catch villains, which yeah. is really funny. But at one point he like brings out like a, I think like a photo album or something, and then she's like, oh, and then he like opens it and it's like all of the traps he's ever set up. And he's yeah. like, oh, we caught a villain with this one. It's just funny to it's me. It's a funny show. Wait, he's funny. I did not like whatever the fuck they had going on between Velma, Velma and, and Shaggy. Shaggy. Yeah, it was a little, like, you don't need a romance. I thought, like, that's why I loved the Fred thing so much. Yeah. Like, Velma, wait, no, I'm sorry, uh, Daphne. Daphne. Daphne being so like, oh, like, Fred, what's going on? And Fred's like, you know, oh, I set this trap. Like, that's like, a funny <laughs> dynamic, you know? He was such a himbo. And, like, it's not even that they set up the uh, Velma and Shaggy thing. Yeah, aside, like, this yeah. Was, I remember being so confident. The only time, like... Thelma and Shaggy and Scooby Run Scooby were like typically focusing on their yeah. thing. And I always really liked Velma mm -hmm. and I kind of found her annoying in this one. She was a little bit manipulative and I felt that, like that was wrong. She was always such like a cool little bitch. Yeah. Now we have the old Scooby. Do you remember that movie where it, like we at the end, like they had been like, let's play ball. Want to catch the villain? I like baseball. And at the end, like they're like, oh, by the way, the villain was the baseball guy. And I was like, oh, if you're the main villain of a thing. Don't do cheesy one-liners about your interests, and maybe you won't get discovered. Uh, it was... Do you remember the ghoul school? Oh, I do remember the ghoul school! But wasn't it kind of like a shaggy Scooby spinoff? It was just the two of them, I right? Think it, yeah, I think it was, but I liked it. No, it was really ghoul good. School. The zombie island. Really, the movies are what carried the old one for me. Yeah. You're moving all stuff down to the D range. I, I feel like I'd be, I have, I've become bitchier. Like, honestly, I could go through and probably move all of these down a tier two. The thing with, like, Mystery Incorporated and Scooby-Doo, the originals. I'm going to go back to what I initially said with C. Yeah. This is my thing. This is my, yeah. my, my, my personal little circle. A show that I could throw on and, like, be fine with. Right? Yeah. It's on the TV. I'm enjoying it enough. Okay. And, like, whatever. D is, like, something I would probably try to avoid. Like, if it was on the TV, I would aim to turn it off on purpose. No, you changed my mind. Because... You're right. You're right. Remember the oh, was it the first villain was like the teacher. And they're like, well, wait, you have a job as a teacher. Why are you trying to get more money? And he just looks at them and they go, oh. <laughs> no, it's, that's, I love meta. Yeah. Com like, I love that. So you're right. I was wrong. All right. Um, so where we put in the, the 1985, 87 Shira, whatever it was. All I know is that the only good parts about it were Katra. <laughs> being like, no. 
How dare you? How dare you forget Hordak turning into time to practice my rocket form? He turns into a rocket. It was so dumb and good. Are we thinking C for the same reasons Kobe Oko's at C? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the, we're T-Man. It's there too, right? Yeah. On C? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It could be on the TV and we'll have a good time for like a few episodes. And then be like, all right, I need to stop watching things okay. ironically. I can only watch something ironically for so long. All right, The Simpsons. What do we think? I don't know. That's a hard one. A shocking little amount of The Simpsons for like what it is. It's, it definitely, once again, product of the 90s. Mm. Well, also it was a product of like four decades because it's been on forever. Yeah. Yeah. There are parts to it that are not good mm -hmm. objectively but also it didn't do the thing that family guy does where everyone's an asshole to each other and we're supposed to just be okay with there it there are redeeming moments and lisa is an icon yeah. i feel that where we gonna put it i don't know if we should void it because even though we've both probably seen a lot if we're talking about in comparison to how many episodes there, there are, are we probably have a very i have a very limited scope south park south park like, here's the thing, is that I would put it down with Family Guy, because I think its sins are as bad, if that makes sense. There are, whereas with Family Guy, like, I'm gonna be real with you, like, I'm not just, like, trying to be a dick, like, I just have never really seen anything I've liked about it. Yeah. South Park had, when I was younger, and we watched it, because we, we grew up in a household that, like, our parents would put it on TV, and, like, would be like, oh, maybe the kids shouldn't watch this, and let us watch it anyway. Yeah. There were parts of it that could have been funny that I really wish that the show just didn't turn into, like, shitty regressionist centrist fodder. Yeah. Where it's like, both sides are stupid, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. Like, when they did stuff that wasn't political, like, the South Park uh, goth kids. That's funny! The goth... Or the vampire one, the... High School Musical. Yeah. Like... There were, like, when they wouldn't talk about stuff that was, like, you know, awful and bad, or, like, you know, be racist and be like, oh, haha, -ha, it's just, you know, you shouldn't... It's you know, dark humor. It's dark humor, bro. Um, Concur. Yeah. That feels, that feels right. Something finally joined Family Guy. This... This is controversial no matter where we put this i want to put it where it lives in my heart not Which where is. it would exist today where it was on for too long probably and stuff just kept happening if you really take out the latter half of the show yeah. it has some of the strongest episode to episode writing meaning that you could put on any episode and it would be a hit yeah it old spongebob was the king of shows it really was before avatar came in and, and claimed the title it was spongebob i think it was, and in a different sense, whereas Avatar oh, yeah. is, like, in S because of its overarching plot and its, like, deep themes, Spongebob was silly, but every episode you put on, you could... If you really think about the cultural impact, I know it sounds funny, the cultural impact Spongebob had, where you can reference any old episode and everyone will understand what you're talking about. You could turn on any episode from, like, the first few seasons, and you could pull ten quotes out of that one yeah. single episode that everyone would probably be able to, like, understand to some degree or another, for the most part. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I don't think it's S for personal reasons. Like, I just, like... It belongs there. It does. It, it's earned its crown. Shira. 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 Shira, Shira. I think it's an S. I do too. I know it had its issues. I know both in and out of its universe and show it had its issues. Yeah. It reinvigorated my love for Western animation single-handedly. When we first, because I remember Michaela and I, I love the story, Michaela and I first started watching Shira because we kept seeing fan art of them on the internet and being like, we literally thought it was people not doing a good job drawing Yang and Blake. <laughs> That's so funny. We're like, there's a blonde and a cat. Why are they doing such a bad job drawing them? And they were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, different show. Different blonde jock and cat girlfriend. Exactly. Which is a great theme. No, it's very it's, funny. We need a third to complete the try. <laughs> and <laughs> at this point, we had been in a drought it was of a cartoons. Drought. We were miserable. We were, we were miserable. We were miserable. And I don't know why, because some of these cartoons we ended up watching had already been out. We just didn't know. We couldn't them, find them. We couldn't. I feel like we couldn't find them. We just had like a hard time getting into anything. We would throw something on the TV, watch an episode or two, be sad about it, and stop. Like, because I remember this when we were watching things, like, nothing was drawing me, and I was like, is this really all there is? Am I never going to find something that I feel, like, strongly about? Shira came on. Dude, we not only plowed through Shira, when season five came out, we watched it in one sitting. We did. It was, I, cr I cried a lot. Oh, I cried a lot, too. I cried it's, baby. it's good. It just, yeah. It's also funny. And in some ways, it did, like, a better job of, like, modernizing it, I think. In some, you know what I mean? Like... They did a great job with the source material. It's 
phenomenal voice acting a1 like a1. genuinely like the Bo voice seahawk casting. voice yeah. casting was great really um you know what really got me what? i think what really sold me on the show and I, I think you were there for it was when um you they hit me with the line behold my fee just i remember at that moment thinking like this show is like willing to be goofy enough that it's really gonna worm its way into my heart and it no did. it's um it belongs there i i with you what are we thinking for Teenage Robot? I guess like the equivalent of like any of the other ones you put in the C tier, where like I don't remember a whole lot. I remember kind of liking it. Like I put it in Void. Yeah, Void's probably the best. Because the more I think about, I remember a lot more from everything we put in right, C right. than I remember Teenage Robot. Yeah. The Hollow. Um. I put it on F for the first time for reasons that aren't just it's, offensive, you know, or yeah. humor. Here's the thing, because it's yeah. another one of those things where it probably is better than F. But Brian and I tried to watch like three like, or four times. We did, and we went through like sometimes I think it was like up to six episodes, and we were like trying so hard to find a single thing that we liked about it, and I didn't. I couldn't. And like I understand it probably at one point gets good, maybe. The owls, they're sad. <laughs> you was <be> like, what? <laughs> Forgot about the girl that you're in the sad owls. Like, Stop. Yeah. Yeah. My reason for F tier is that I didn't like the show. Um. Same. It's not that it's it's. <laughs> bad or problematic it's just i didn't like it it pro it probably gets good maybe one day i'll find out maybe. if i'm drunk enough um the 80s turtles because even though i've watched other drop like the other iterations of the turtles 80s is the one you and i in our childhood watched the most of i have fond memories um, question yes who's best hurt oh dude best hurt is michelangelo no best hurt is donatello i remember i didn't care all that much for Raphael because he was just angry and not in the way that i liked I feel like if I were to rewatch it, though, I'd like it. Oh, maybe. I, yeah, oh, shit, you're right. No. So where do you want to put that? I don't know. I like, I have very fun memories of it, but, like, I haven't seen it in a very long time. I feel like C is it's very fun. much where it belongs. It's, so we got very lax days of um, this as we're going through. We're just like, C. Yeah, C. We'll dump everything. In, well, it makes sense if we're dumping everything and see if that's medium. Yeah. Like, if we can't really figure out how we feel about it, it's probably medium. Yeah, it makes sense. If, I know I'm doing Amphibia dirty. I just know I am. It feels wrong, but... Okay, wait, I have to do this thing again where I don't know how to like move on my screen. Wait, where'd it go? Oh. Sorry. Yeah? Yeah? Oh. <gasps> you know, yes. Okay, okay. It, it just surprises me myself that I would put it there. Does that make sense? Like, I love that show so much. I don't know why I feel like there's, it, it's a bunch of small things coming together that just make me really feel strongly about it. It, one, I think, may have the best found family yeah. I've seen in a while. Yeah, the found family's strong. Ida perfect voice casting great um so funny great i know i've been so saying funny. that about a lot of shows i'm like oh the show's really funny owl house stands above i think even some of the other ones that have like maybe stronger tied narratives like avatar or like she -Rob. yeah owl house is just funny as shit it's <laughs> just the jokes land every time i think the owl house does a good job of balancing pop culture references that are really funny and then also just regular humor that's yeah. in the show's humor. Setting up a joke and then landing the punchline yourself. Like. And I think it's good that they can do both. Absolutely. It's just, oh, and the fact that they're tying the episodic ones into overarching, like, episodes. They do it the best, maybe. It's so, it's yeah. like subtle, perfect, and I think season two, the two episodes we've seen, it's promising. Yeah. Tom and Jerry. Why did you? I have a question. Yeah. Why did you specifically put Tom and Jerry in here of all the Looney Tunes? Yeah, I have seen Looney Tunes. But like, well, I'm just curious because like, I would have either included all of them or none of them. It's just weird to me that you singled out Tom and Jerry <laughs> and put them in here. Because I feel like they're such an iconic duo. I would like. I know Tom and Jerry episodes. Like I've seen some. I guess somewhat recently enough to know my opinion on it. Which is that it's good. I guess like it's. I'm gonna put it in void. Yeah. I, mean, I think you're right. I think it shouldn't be in this ranking. Totally Spies. Crossover. Totally Spies. Amphibia. Totally Spies. Like, to totally Spies. That's wait, wait. Yeah. I'm going to try one. Okay, okay. Um, Totally Spies. Futurama. Crossover. Totally Fries. Totally. I like that was a good one. Right? Totally I, haven't even, yeah. Yeah. I haven't even watched that much Futurama. I feel really good about that, actually. That was a good one. Okay, thank you. I anyway, like Totally Spies. B? Oh, you C? Oh, I'm not you. I don't know. You, you moved the map there. No. Totally, I just don't remember anything about it. I think it goes in like, the same vein of yeah. I watch it ironically. Right, right, right. Um, because it's very stupid. Mm -hmm. They will. <gasps> what? I just remember that one character who I like a lot. The bitch? Yeah. 
Because she's like, I mean, you show the same vein of that, where like, if a character is just a complete asshole, we love them. Teen Titans Go. This is, this is my shining moment. Um, do it. Do it. Do it. It's like, I don't even know if it's that controversial, because I think Teen Titans Go went past the point of it being relevant. Because I remember when it first came out, it was like hot goss. Yeah, people were like, or, oh, like, I hate this. Or, oh. And I, you and I, I remember, watched the first episode and we're like, as a joke, and then we're like, wait a minute. And then we just kind of watched all of it, and yeah. we thought it was really good. Yeah. Um, it's very funny. I like it. I don't think it's that hot of a take anymore. It's not. It's no, not. people, people, enjoy, we're not, we're not special. We're not special. Tragic. I'm, I'm special. I like Teen I'm the Titans only Go. one who likes Teen, I'm the only one who likes the show that's maybe the most popular show. <laughs> was it really even a hot take at the time? Did we ever really have no, a hot take? it was a hot take for someone who had originally grown up with the 2003 okay, version. Okay, all right. Because I know a lot of people who like it didn't, because I, I keep forgetting that that show is old. 2003 yeah. is a decent chunk of time ago. Oh, I don't know. I didn't. It came, no, we, remember we had the video game. We'd play in the basement computer. Oh, where you fought each other. Yeah. Like, I don't think addicting games were ever. No, probably not. I have a lot of nostalgia for it. It was one of my first favorite shows. And I still, because I think the thing is, they're not trying to like add on to the original show in a bad way. They recreated it. Oh, yeah. You're not supposed to look at it as the same show. It's really funny. It nails meta humor. I could deal with less of the butt shaking. But Teen Titans Go! The Movies is one of the funniest movies ever made. It is maybe the easiest show to throw on and just sit back and fucking laugh. Yeah. And just kick it. And like... I would put it in A. It's in the A, and if it was just a movie, it would be S. It would. If it was, <laughs> no, I agree. Because every once in a while, there will be like one of the episodes where I'm like not laughing yeah. too hard. But like overall, like they've done... So, every single time, like they don't have any more meta commentary to make. They do. Mm -hmm. The Get Serious episode. The Serious episode is maybe cinematic masterpiece. Every episode's a banger. Uh, it's got a great blend of different types of humor. You know. I also like the animation. The animation's cute. fun. Yeah. Very vibrant. It's very I've vibrant. I've been saying that about a lot of stuff today. No, but... but it, it means a lot to me. It does. It has some vibrant animation. And yeah, I, I think they're also self-aware, mm -hmm. which I think's funny. <laughs> Here, I'll do Young Justice first because you don't have anything to fucking say about that. I don't. You can just do what you want and I can't fight it because it's... it's... Young Justice is the more serious Teen Titans with the problem of Ruby of adding on too many characters and trying too hard to like fit into the comic lore, which is what I liked about the original Teen Titans is that it, it didn't do that, it which I know we're about to do Teen Titans in a second, mm -hmm. but I would say B, if it kept in the first season where it was just like the main, how many is that? Like six characters, seven, I don't know. The main few characters, I would put it at A, but they didn't. They kept yeah. adding. Um, I'm pretty sure this Robin was voiced by Jesse McCartney. Shut up. No. Shut Let up. me double check. Oh my gosh, she's looking again. And we have to keep one warning before the, sh the episode ends, I guess. Behind the voice actors. Young Justice. Yeah, Chessie McCartney voiced this Robin. Her Nightwing. That's pretty fucking funny. All right. Someone looted me. Last but not least. Teen Titans, which... Nostalgia recently and when i say recently what i mean is probably like it was within the last three years maybe two or three years me and tom sat down and threw some episodes of the first season we started at the beginning and like we kind of realized that we didn't want to keep rewatching. i have rewatched it multiple times since i was a kid yeah i agree the first the first season's a little hard i think that's what it is i'm gonna be real with you because right now we can talk there are parts of that show that have stuck with me through the years moments where i said wow Mostly about Cyborg, who I love um, so much. You know what it is? Yeah. I think if it's something where you don't want to force yourself to watch it, you're going to have to pick a random episode you know is good first. And just get into to it. To get back into but it. Like season one was like, Cyborg loses his car, and he misses his car. And then Raven says that he's more than his car. And then like that's the episode. And I was like, all right, man. like That's a lot to sit through for 20 minutes. Like, And then you go into season four, and it's like, Will Raven's father use her as a portal to come take over the world? Question mark. And you're like, all right. We went to 100 real fast. This is the equivalent of Drake and Josh in season one trying to be cool. <laughs> and then in season five, they have to stop an orangutan from orang being eaten by a man who eats orangutan. How like, did I forget about the orangutan until you just said that? Yeah. Or like Pitch Perfect, where like the first one's like, we need to win this competition. And the third one, they're like jumping off of like a ship that's on fire. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just... Maybe that's all it was. It was just, it, it, it made me realize that Teen Titans is not like, to me, like Avatar level. I still love it a lot. They also are one of the only, I'm saying this, they are one of the only cartoons that talk about superheroes without 
thinking of a first bitch to think about what if we made it like dark though what if they were like morally ambiguous sometimes i'm a little sick of that because i think every single person who makes a superhero show thinks of the or movie thinks of the first person doing that yeah and that was also like a product of like immediately after that time like a little after 2003 is when that started and like kept going down the rabbit hole where now we just can't watch something without it being gritty and dark and like some Um, of them but the thing was they had a balance because sometimes it was a little dark it just wasn't excessive it could get heavy without it perpetuating the entire show yeah it belongs in the a tier yeah i i was just saying like, i needed to get that out of my system it's, it's not i, I think understand. that i think that the, the passage of time has hit it maybe a little bit differently than like say avatar or whatever but so now that was the last one right that was you forgot something shannon no you should feel really ashamed it's a big one Brian. It's maybe even i would argue the core of some of Is the entire be meme cleopatra <laughs> <laughs> was it cleopatra in space <laughs> What, was, is that what it was? Or is it... I forgot we watched a few episodes of that. Was it Cleopatra in the future? No, it was Cleopatra in space. Cleopatra in space. Where she befriended a fish girl and a robot man yeah. in the future mm-hmm. with a talking cat. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and did space things. I can't believe you forgot Cleopatra in space. Cleopatra in space. So, all right. Let's... Are, what adjustment? Are there any adjustments? Because right now, I think we have a solid S tier. I know you might feel differently about Infinity Train, but fuck you. No, no. I, I think that I'm happy. I'm happiest with the S and A tier. And then also some of the lower tiers. Like, I feel like they belong there. The middle section is always the hardest. Always. It is. You know? Let's, well, okay, let's go there. Let's discuss the finals version. So we have Avatar, Infinity Train, Over the Garden Mall, Shira, Princesses of Power, Hell House. Solid wow. S tier. Look at that shit. Great, great shows. Genuinely, one season, yeah. Plus one. Brian, can you stop shitting on Infinity Train? No, I didn't mean that in a mean It's way. not it shit five, Infinity but... Train, whatever. Shit, anyway. Shit Infinity Train. Okay, so A. Courage checks out. Love Courage. Glitch, Glitch checks, checks, great. Gumball, funny. Yep. Kipo, great. Uh-huh. Ruby yep. is a show. It belongs there for us. <laughs> for right. us. SpongeBob. Yep. Teen and both Titans. Yes. Yep. B. Bob's Burgers. Uh, Coding Kids Next Door. Mm-hmm. Dexter's Lab. Dragon Prince. Early Out Parents Futurama. Gravity Falls, Hey Arnold, Hilda, Legend of Korra, Pacific Rim, <laughs> Recess, Rick and Morty, Samurai Jack, and Young Justice. Yeah. Shows that, like, fill the space around the shows that we feel much stronger about. Should Recess be lower? I don't know, actually. I I feel like if I were, I had the option for C+, it would be there. Yeah, no, maybe it'd be like, oh, I'm thinking it's like, I would actively seek out some of those other shows and watch them. Recess, I don't remember well enough. Like, it's or, good. Like, I just yeah. remember, but now that the more I think about it, the more I'm like, that's, it doesn't, feel like it belongs to everything else we have right, there. Right, right. Okay, C. Amphibia, which we understand. Can shoot up very high. We understand. Uh, Code Lyoko, ironic. Danny Phantom, good, but not like, mm-hmm. eh. Both the My Little Ponies. He-Man, ironically. Fosters, once again, good, but... Mm. Barbie, good. Powerpuff Girls, Rock Power. Uh, both Scoobies. Shira, ironically. Turtles, ironically. Uh, Toy Spies, ironically. And Recess. That checks out to me. For C. D. Things that we know are good, but are also very loud. Ed, Ed, Nettie, Billy and Mandy, Invader Zim, uh, Jimmy Neutron. It's funny that those three, those first three shows kind of fall really into that same sect of, like, television. Yeah. yeah. I, I really do think it's because we're older and now we don't find screaming as funny anymore. Yeah. Um, Miraculous Ladybug, which I don't know if I want, if I continue to watch it would eventually become ironically C. We don't know. Talk Zone, which once again, yeah. not that memorable, and Rugrats, kind of loud again. Uh, F, Family Guy in South Park because of offensive issues. Al, uh, the Hollow because it's offensive to me. Yeah. Personally, I hate it. Yes. It's how I phrase it. Void shows we don't remember enough of to have an opinion, mm-hmm. but we want and Camp to. Camp Laszlo because you didn't want to comment on how you, <laughs> your problems with the bisexual community and icons within it. <sighs> Shut up. Yeah, if you have really strong opinions about Cleopatra and space, I do want to hear them. Like, one day I feel like I could probably plow through it if I tried hard enough. Yeah. And really anything I could watch if I'm forced to. The Hollow. No. 